I did the Marathon de Sable. I've done it twice. The first time I ran it, um, we'd like to say competitively, but it isn't for people, the average person. You're not trying to win it. It's a bit like running the London Marathon. You're just trying to do it because it's a, a challenge. Um, and I had no, I've never done anything like that. So, um, and did okay. I was sort of the second fastest Brit and 26th or 28th. Marathon de Sable starts in April. And of course, if you're training, you're coming through the winter, so all I did was just wear loads and loads of stuff. So you get used to training in really warm clothes. You, I think you're doing it in October. So um, you'll have had the summer, so you don't need to dress up quite as, <laughs> as much. But you can prepare when you go out. You can, you know, I, would, I would recommend you wear more than you would normally wear. So you're not comfortable, you're slightly uncomfortable. Mm. Your body starts to get used to that. And the other thing was, I didn't do any massive distances or anything like that because I just didn't want to end up injured beforehand. I just thought, mm. I've got to get used to running with weight on. And so I just ran, and that's the difference in the run there. You run with weight on rather than um, normal running. So when I arrived there, you found lots of really super-duper athletes and people like that. None of them are trained for the heat. None of them are trained with the weight. Mm. If, they'd, if we'd all run a marathon that day, they'd have skinned, skinned us, you know, skinned me by miles because they're quick runners and super duper light but as soon as you put a pack on and put them in the heat they started to, to wilt so that was the only thing for me that was a great advantage because um, the first four or five days was them getting used to that and by the time they got used to it the, most of the distance is covered so yeah, in terms of time I was, I was okay so I'm not a great runner I'm not anything great it's just the preparation was the thing there. the terrain is, is completely varied so sometimes you've just got nice firm ground, yeah. sort of gravelly. You've got other times you've got the sand dunes, other times you've got really rocky and difficult stuff. Um, so how did I profess? I ran, uh, I was training and I was working in London, so I used to go out at lunch break and ran around the parks and they have the um, horse rides with the sand in. Mm -hmm. I just ran all the way around there, so I used to do at lunch break, <laughs> dressed in all this kit. And so how did you advise people who didn't have access to the I, To be honest, I don't think there's a huge, I wouldn't worry too much about it. The thing is get the distance under you. Just do the walks, just get some walking under you, you know, and, and just get used to walking distances. And if you're, if you're fit enough to walk, that, uh, you can do that sort of distance that I think you're, you're doing. You don't have to do it every time, but if you can do that comfortably, the terrain won't make a huge amount of difference. You'll be hyped up and you'll be excited by it all, and that'll just carry through. You will need some good shoes. Um, obviously, running, you're doing it in trainers. In, um, I would imagine you, you don't need trainers. You can get those lightweight walking, sturdy things. Not, not heavy walking boots, just get lightweight. Do you um, need to have ankle support? Or um, <coughs> If I were doing it, I'd probably do it in trainers, but then, because <laughs> I ran, and it's the same terrain, and you're running over in, if you can run it in trainers, you sort of feel, feel you can walk it. But I think you can get these lightweight walking shoes with a bit of ankle support, that's probably quite nice. The <laughs> thing is, though, that you, that your biggest problem is sand and blisters, mm. and uh, the sand will get in your shoes, and, um, and it obviously acts a bit like sand, sandpaper. So what, what we did was we created some gaiters, which uh, stuck to the, um, the rim around the, the, you know, the edge of the sole. We stuck those, uh, well, we Velcroed them there, so we put a Velcro tape around. And they were parachute uh, material, and just shaped, so they came over the shoe completely in one piece. And, uh, and the other thing is make sure that they're not brand new. Because yeah. so many people buy brand new and say, oh, this is the big distance, and they turn up there and get blisters straight away. Yeah. And blisters in the Marathon to Solve is the biggest problem. Uh, regardless of what anybody says, uh, uh, dehydration can be if you don't concentrate, but blisters. The times I've done it, most of the big injuries and the real pain comes from blisters. So and how do you prevent blisters then? And what do you do to um, do it? One is get the training in, so your feet are, and use your, the shoes you're going to use. So uh, you know, don't completely wear them out, but uh, at least have them, uh, yeah, you see those. But they have the sensor in there, which means that, they walk, they sort of walk on an angle. Right. Just to replicate the core. Just to build your core. Yeah, your core muscles. So it's massive there. Can you say they're perfect? And you just stick that velcro around here and then you roll your things up and you could. I mean, I'd, okay. I'd be alright with it. So it doesn't matter that they rock, they wouldn't put any extra strategy. If you're comfortable with them, 
Mm. You're going to be comfortable, aren't you? If that's what yeah. you're training, you know, then yeah. And I think there's a lot, a lot of worry about shoes. But if you're comfortable in them, they're not giving you blisters. Great. We don't think that in the sun. I'm surprised to hear that because mm. uh, I mean these things are trained to quite high, yeah. high um, status. So if they're melting, there's I'm re- that was really hot. Not very good at <laughs> <laughs> So I was just thinking, wow. Um, I didn't. I've never come across that before. So uh, and no one ever mentioned, oh, your shoes melted. So, I suppose if you're on tarmac or something like that, they might. But even then, yeah, it's a tarmac. Yeah, and socks too. Well, I uh, I made a mistake the second time. The first time, uh, the, the the everyone was talking about these. Um, they're called Perel Dries or Seal Skins, which were um, the waterproof socks and people were wearing those, and I wore those all the way through. Uh, and the idea was that that, again, helps prevent sand getting in. But on reflection, I didn't like that. I think your feet get too hot and sweaty mm-hmm. in there. And uh, so the next time I, I bought... Um, so I only took two pairs of socks. I, I wore one, one that I would be wearing during the, the run, because you, you're really carrying stuff, so you don't want to carry You're trying to keep your weight down. And the other one was these thousand miles, quite thin things. The, the pair that I was going to run in were like a toweling cushioned sock. Mm. And within five miles, I stopped and took them off and just threw them away because they were heating my feet and mm. I was starting to get the hot, hot spots. And I put the other thin pair on, so that's all I had. And that saw me through the whole thing. I didn't get any blisters at all, but we were walking this time because uh, we carried a rhino costume. Those they, socks, they do a, they do a, a cool and dry uh, thing, I do, you know, a thousand milers I had, yeah. which were those very thin mm-hmm. things, and they were just fine for, for them. Oh. <laughs> well, these are the week from John Lewis, and they've got double lining, so yeah. that's supposed to take away. Yeah, I heat. think that's similar to. Uh, and those the the bit of the camera. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah those. I had a single. And, and hold the amputees <laughs> up. Oh, wait, please hang on. Love them, love them. I see all day out. This is bloody rubbish. But, uh, <laughs> um, These are double lines, so I think that takes away the heat, and then that obviously has got a little bit of padding in the toes. So I had a variation of those, which was just single skin, and they were fine. And they kept your feet cool. It's quite expensive uh, as well. They're about 12, 14 pounds per sock. Mm. And that's the thing. So the feet I, are the biggest thing uh, next to water, or both those things, I'd say you've got to really look after. If you feel your feet getting hot, you're getting this, you can feel the wearing, stop and deal with it. Because I, I promise you, I, I saw so many painful things. But he never, he didn't prepare himself, I don't think, and he didn't stop when he could and just yeah. fix your feet. And it's a bit embarrassing, uh, just for five minutes or as you stop, and take your foot. So, fix your feet means... So, the first thing is, if you are prone to getting blisters mm. in a certain spot, before you even start, make sure you've taped them up. And uh, zinc, I use zinc oxide tape, and if I know where there's a hot spot I'm going to get a blister, I tape it with, pre-tape it, a couple of layers of zinc oxide tape. So no padding or anything? If I know there's a hot spot, I don't bother with the padding. Okay. If as soon as you start getting a hot spot and you start getting ill, you get a blister, then put a little bit of gauze against it and then zinc oxide tape, two or three layers. And that, that actually forms, and if you and don't take it off at the end of the day, just add to it. So you're only there three days, add to it. The only problem with zinc oxide tape, some people have a reaction to it. And you need to test that beforehand. Because if you start to get rashes and things like that on your feet, it's worse. So you need to find another type of tape. But the thing I've, uh, and I served in the forces and um, was in the Paris, so we, we would just tape and just keep taping and don't take it off until the, whatever the event is over. Otherwise, you, you find you're tearing the skin and mm-hmm. stuff. Now, there might come a time where you have to take it off because you've got to clean it or something like that. So lots of sand and rubbish. Cleaning. But if you've taped it properly, you won't get any rubbish in there. And if you, if you deal with it straight away, you won't get stuff. Whereas you see people who... And they don't stop. It's just unbelievable. They won't stop. And they end up with big, horrible blisters when they take the feet off because your adrenaline is going... You, carrying on walking and you think yeah, I'll be alright when you get there and when you get there it's actually quite nasty and in that environment the sand is getting in if you're not careful so it can, can, get you, can you can see people get infections and stuff and, uh, and it, I would just say it's just not worth it especially if you're walking just stop sort it out and, going, uh, and for the benefit of the team <laughs> <laughs> we have doctors with us on the track anyway.